Hey, what's up, all you beautiful weirdos? Welcome to episode 29 of I'd Rather Be Motivated. <clears throat> Excuse me, brought to you by I'd Rather Be Drawing.com. On tonight's episode, we're going to be talking with uh, fellow artist here, David Fleming, about the launch of I'd Rather Be Drawing's first ever Kickstarter and the uh, um, early success already happening with that. But before we get going too much on that, Mr. Fleming, where can we find you and where do you want people's attention directed these days? All right, hey, what's up, guys? Uh, yeah, um, Instagram, Art of Mr. Fleming, and the link in the bio sends you to the Kickstarter. The link in the show notes sends you to the Kickstarter. Just like Scott said, um, I just ran my first ever Kickstarter. Um, it was a, it was a, it wasn't a huge goal, but we made it in the first forty-eight hours. Um, it's been a really cool thing to see my fans jump out and just and do their thing quick so quickly because so, now I've just got this after effect here to kind of like see what I can do with the rest of this month and stuff. So um, yeah, check out the Kickstarter, um, Analog Missions. That's what it's all about right now. And follow me on Instagram because it's where all the, all the action happens. How about you, Scott? Uh, very cool. First off, I want to say, hey, what's up to the fellas in the chat? We have Ace from Comic Den and we have uh, Red, of uh, Ronnie Gunter there. What's up, guys? Nice seeing you there. And uh, Ace, I just want to say congratulations on the book signing on Friday night. That looked like a lot of fun. Uh, but for me, I am Scott O. Green. Um, best place to find me all the time is on Instagram. Uh, my handle there is Mr. Green Draws. That's Mr. Green Draws, and that's where I'm working on my 100 Days of Making Comics Volume Four. Uh, my contribution for this is a four-page comic that will be going into and be printed with um, fellow. Um, Oh, alum and veterans of the 100 Days Challenge, and we'll go into a great big anthology called Werewolves and Unicorns and Other Mythical Creatures. So uh, we're getting towards the tail end of that. It is day 69, so I even need to make a check-in video today. It's been a couple days, so I want to be able to say hey and show my progress there, but I guess I can do a little bit of that here in the meantime as well. Um, but that's me. Um, and, oh, yeah, so if this is your first time checking it out, um, this is uh, our weekly art check-in show. We call it an art check, and uh, we uh, do just that. We kind of keep accountable with each other and make sure that we're kind of going, pressing towards our goals each week and find out what's going on. We always go over the three Ps, which is progress, problems, and plans, and that kind of always then gets us rolling into our topic of discussion after that. So first off, David, uh, the past two weeks, the, the past two shows before this was you flying solo and then me flying solo. So it's been a little while, but uh, even just in the past week or with everything going on, what's been your progress? Um, yeah, man, it's been a fun thing with us doing our little solo shows. It's kind of cool to know that we both kind of can still do our thing even when we have to be absent. Um, so I think the last time we talked, I had a goal of getting a certain amount of pages done and launching the Kickstarter. Well, um, my son, Henry, was born two and a half weeks early, so he really threw off the curve. So um, I do still have two pages left to ink, to finish the inking on Analog Missions, but what I was able to do was bring my laptop to the hospital and actually get a lot of that work done that I didn't expect already to be done. So Wait I a second. Some... Your kid was being born and you were still able to get work done? Yeah, I mean, you know, you're in the hospital, someone's watching your other kid, your your uh, baby eats every two hours and takes naps on, uh, in between, so I was just sitting there kind of like working on page layouts and some other stuff just that I knew I was doing something because I couldn't just straight up draw pages. That's awesome. So everybody, when you have an excuse about you're too tired or this or that or it's hard to multitask, keep that one in mind. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not, I'm definitely not trying to brag or anything, but I mean like, uh, if no, you guys I know, ever, man, that's just awesome. If you guys ever decide to run a Kickstarter and then your kid is born, um, you'll know because <laughs> you're like, I, I can't just stop everything I'm doing here. I got to figure out how to work all this in between. And so he wasn't supposed to come even until next Thursday. So 
I, I planned this to be like I'd launch and I'd get all this good stuff out of the way and then he'd be born and I could be a little more chill about the campaign. So, um, but you know, I mean, life happens and you just got to like work with that kind of thing. So um, I am happy about that. I've got all of chapter two is completely scanned in completely touched up. I, I do after I scan the pages in a little bit of gray tone and some effects that I couldn't get with my like screen tones on the digital end with some like, one of the scenes is like uh, they're walking through the woods and it gets darker and darker until they're sitting on a campfire. And so I had to play with some some kind of digital gray tone effect stuff. And chapter two is sitting there pretty. Um, chapter three is sitting pretty all but two two pages because I actually decided to redraw a couple of pages. I got towards the end, I was playing with some of the dialogue and kind of how I wanted to close up. And it felt like it happened a little too quickly because there's a little bit of a the ending sort of fight scene uh it's supposed to wrap up rather abruptly but it felt very like oh i guess that's over and so i have to play with a little bit of layout there at the last minute and so that kind of pushed me just a little bit more behind but like and all in all like i'm actually i think further along with the project than i thought i'd be even though i've got a couple pages left to just like throw in the computer and once they're in the computer i mean it's all me just sitting there and doing font layouts and stuff like that. So I have that to look forward to then over the next month while the, while the campaign sits there. But yeah, there's my, uh, there's my progress. How about you, man? Awesome. So since the last time we talked, um, the last time we talked, my goal for the next time we talked was to have my episode two of drawing inspiration done. Now that was supposed to have been a couple shows ago when you had first gone solo. And I had kind of put it to the back burner with just kind of, being excited about being excited about where I was at with uh, my comic project. Um, but I've uh, got that done. It's edited. Um, I didn't want to like, I got it done today, like finished it up. I didn't want to like release it on the same day that we're doing this video. So I thought maybe I'd wait a day or two um, to put it out. Um, try to figure out maybe the best time to do that. I'm not exactly sure there. Um, but I think what else, so along with that is when I release it, I always like to have a drawing done with it. So for those that don't know, one of my solo projects on this, um, channel is drawing inspiration. And I talked a little bit about it, um, last episode when I went solo and what the idea is, if you know, Jake Parker, or follow him, there's an idea of the creative bank account and just whether it's through other people's experiences or through your own experiences, um, you kind of need, life to uh draw from uh no pun intended right <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, to draw from so that when you sit down at the drawing table like you've got fuel to go off of you know ideas and inspiration and everything and i'm <clears throat> up here in the pacific northwest moved from where i lived uh close to david in the midwest there in kansas city and just kind of experiencing a lot of new stuff so it was my way to kind of have a travel art show where um, I'll kind of go around and experience different stuff and try to frame things through my perspective. And uh, I'll, I'll kind of pause on it and do a freeze frame to kind of give an idea for something that you can draw in your sketchbook, whether it's a, a cool mountain scene or a boat or a weird creature at a wax museum, um, just different ideas for people to draw. And I was pretty excited about that because I got my uh, Squatchy Ink, who is oftentimes in here, his name is Wes. Um, he, I, I made a post about it on Instagram and the idea that I posted a whole bunch of pictures of where I was last Sunday, um, which was at a kind of a, a pop culture museum where they had a whole bunch of Marvel stuff. And he did a picture of that and then posted it with a hashtag drawing inspiration. So I was pretty jazzed about that because that's my first ever someone um, joining in on that. But anyway, yeah, in a little bit, but um, so that's rolling. I'm going to release that second one this week because that's done. Um, and yeah, Oh, and then, uh, so on my actual comic then, the progress there is, is I got my pages all scanned in and I've been doing the little bit that you had showed me about how to use uh, Photoshop to put in the voice boxes and the panel borders. Oh, yeah. I outlined the voice bubbles myself, but the actual like uh, speech boxes and then the panel borders <clears throat> I did online. And I thought it was cool because I really like the by hand look but I thought it would be cool to have maybe just like one element that's like rock solid tight. And in that it'll be, you know, those panel borders and then like the narrator boxes, everything else there's room for kind of, you know, the asymmetricalness of life or whatnot. But I thought that would give it a little bit more of a foundation. So I have all those done in there and I'm rolling on the words. So yeah, that's my progress. Right on, man. 
Uh, what about uh, problems? Any that you want to talk about? I know we're going to be talking about your Kickstarter as the subject as well, but anything else going on? I know having a new baby is not a problem. And congratulations, by the way, from all of us here in um, YouTube land. And it's pretty awesome what you have going on there. But um, yeah, what problems are you encountering? I mean, like you said, I'm, I'm definitely not calling my, my kid a problem, but there there's a, I could definitely call that a very unexpected event that kind of threw off the flow a little bit. Um, I guess my problem, like number one problem is um, now knowing that this thing is real <laughs> and I got a, I got a thing to show for. Um, I'm starting to hit a little bit of like a, um, like wanting to go in and touch certain things up and, and really make sure that this is like literally the best, like the best freaking project that I can ever make because I got I've got people that are depending on me and I've got to deliver to kind of thing you know mm -hmm. so like uh, there's a little bit of that um, having to fight the that you know we, we actually I think you guys talked about a little bit on your art caster show the sort of imposter syndrome thing the yeah. um, the all these people, everybody right the all these people just backed me and I'm not saying I don't believe in myself or anything but that the um like like <laughs> who are these people that they that they trust me and I'm like putting all this faith in me to make this awesome product. So this thing better freaking rock, you know, kind of thing. So I have a little bit of that going on in my head. Um, I'd say I, that's the good kind of nerves. Yeah. I've definitely, I'm, I'm not like stuck on it or anything too much. I'm, but it, it went through my head a couple, couple times here in the past week. And so I am sort of playing with that a little bit in terms of problems, but I really think that's like my biggest thing right now is just um, n telling myself that like this thing is obviously killing it for a reason and I've got something to share kind of thing and, and just going with my flow, with the flow kind of thing. I call that my problem. Makes good sense. <clears throat> um, that's your problems? Yeah, I would definitely quote that one. Cool, cool. Um, so... I don't know. I just just the normal stuff, which is just life and time and and getting things done. Um, I have uh, it's a bit of a ticking clock. Next weekend is Emerald City Comic Con, and while I'm not tabling there, I am going down with kind of a. I'm trying to be a bit more focused than I have in the past. Every time I go down, especially last time, um, was the first time that I went to Emerald City, and I meant to go down all business and everything, but holy crap, there's so many awesome creators there that you're just, you know, wide-eyed. And it was almost like first time I, you know, went to a con again. Um, but oh, yeah. I do have a little bit of a plan, but trying to get like a better plan in place um, before the weekend of, um, I want to take down um, some comics of Isabel Crane and things like that to distribute and everything. So uh, just to kind of hand out to people, even like different artists who I like a lot to say, thanks, you know, you inspired me in this way. Here's a comic. I don't need anything from you. Just if you feel like checking it out, awesome stuff like that. Um, but trying to get a game plan together for that and be smart about it. Um, it's not a huge like problem, but it's a challenge that where I'm, yeah, I don't want to lug around a whole bunch of stuff and you don't want to be that guy, but you're like, but if a conversation happens, what would be a smart thing for me to have in my hands to talk about or yeah, you know, things like that. So just trying to get a game plan together for that is uh, kind of one of my bigger challenges right now. But yeah. Um, how about plans, man? Um, we're going to next Sunday. Uh, yeah, I'll be back in town because I'm only going for Friday and Saturday next week. So I should be back and everything. So I don't see any reason if you don't have one that we're, we won't be kind of meeting up again. So in the week, uh, what's your plans with everything? Uh, well, plans would be finish these last two pages, wrap that up and then have the entire third chapter scanned in so that like, you know, by the next time we talk, the only thing I should be doing is, is proofreading and font and text layouts and stuff like that. Like I, if I'm, if I'm doing anything else besides that, you yell at me and, and tell me I don't have time to be on a show because I got work to do. Gotcha. Understand. If we need to, especially that man, if we need to like make it a short one, cause you're like, I got to bust out some stuff or whatever you need to do. We're here for you. We're really excited for you. I don't know how much we really kind of explained, but the, just the fact that, yeah, you launched your Kickstarter and 48 hours funded. So that's awesome, man. Very, very cool. Um, so is that all your plans? Not like that's not enough. <laughs> right. That, I mean, really, that is, succinctly, that is it. I, I, I don't want to be doing any drawing 
I, I even cl- I, I claimed it and it's real. I mean, I'm about 90% through the project. Like um, before the end of the Kickstarter, I, this thing should be done and I should be like, I'm already talking to the printer about templates and all that kind of stuff and getting all that in place. Cause I, 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 I want to be one of those people who, when you, when you back my Kickstarter, you, you get the product as soon as possible. Like it, it, you should never be waiting on me. We're only going to be waiting on printers when it comes down to it kind of thing, you know? So keeping that in my mind is it's helping push my goal because I don't know. I, I think I trailed. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously in a very tired person right now. I, <laughs> yeah, no worries, man. I'm <laughs> trying to get up to kind of forgot. I was actually just getting restless. <laughs> no, that all makes good sense, man. That's a lot on your plate. And it sounds like you're, you're trying to wrap it up. But that whole thing with comics is you're always like, yep, I'm almost there. Oh, there's another thing to tie on. Oh, there's another thing to tie on. There's always kind of one more thing to figure out. So yeah. Um, Sounds like you're doing it though, man, and you're plugging along, and that's awesome. Um, my plans for by the time we talk next week, I have a little bit more. So I did that kind of amateurish artist thing sometimes, where um, you know what's going on in your text bubbles, um, but you don't really actually have like a solid, solid script. And part of that was me not quite knowing the amount of space in the bubbles with the spacing for when it's 11 by 17 and then it's going to shrink down and not knowing which font I was going to use and stuff like that. So um, it's not a huge problem at all. It's just a matter of I need to sit down and actually figure out, um, yeah, the exact words I want to say because it's always like I have an idea in my head. Okay, it's the announcer and he's introducing the main character. Cool. Well, now I have to actually kind of write what the main character is saying. So by the time we talk next week, I'm going to have all of the font filled in on, on the computer. I'm still going to be doing it by hand with a light box, um, so I probably won't quite have that done, but I'm going to have it all, like the script totally written in, you know, comic form uh, in Photoshop because I also have to send that to our editor, Mike Emirates, uh, for proofreading to make sure it follows the Comics Alliance code and uh, um, is, you know, misspellings and all that sort of good stuff. Yeah. So that'll be done by the time we talk. Um, I'll have episode two of Drawing Inspiration out with uh, um, an image posted. And then the other drawing that I want to have done for next week is my drawing, my fan art of Apollo. I've been oh, pushing, yeah. my, pushing my luck. That's been one on my plate or on my list for like a, a long time before you even announce the, the draw on your style or whatnot. Um, but, uh, I have an idea in my head and, uh, I'm excited about it. So hopefully that'll be pretty close to done. If not totally drawn out, uh, by next week. Hey, you better get it together, man. Everyone else is showing you up. Dude, save best for last. Psh. Right. I just got <laughs> another one today, actually, that I'm excited to post and I'm going to kind of make a fun announcement of like who all is making it in the book and stuff here. I've already started messaging some people about it to try and get them to give me like their, their high res files and stuff to start that kind of formatting and stuff. I'm excited about that. That's a really cool thing. I, I like just, I love like this chance to be able to like pull other people into the project too. Like, well, it's a cool idea of, I have a success here. Let me help shine a spotlight on a few other people because yeah. it's just fun. And honestly, it's a cool sh- spotlight that they're shining on you as well. So it's pretty cool. I mean, that's the, you know, comic relationship friendship right there i think you know oh yeah yeah that's that thing i always talk about that i love about like this thing that we do is that you just you get to like i don't know the there's like a fun entry way with with art and stuff where like i mean even some of like i i wouldn't i wouldn't say everything i'm getting is is professional even but like the fact that i've had my fans take the time to do my work like i'm i'm finding a spot for them in the book you know heck yeah so, well, it's it. a sincere, I think, uh, you know, just compliment to you as well. I don't think everyone even knew or is necessarily doing it, you know, just to be printed in a book. Um, right. A lot of them just liked what was going on. And I think especially on our level, when you have an original character that you're pushing, especially when it's a cool design like Apollo and the rest, um, you know, just like when I did the one for Magnus, I had no idea that that was going to be something going in a book or anything. It's just, that's a cool character. You know, when uh, Jeff Kessinger did a sculpture of October, man, and told me he like wanted to do it, like, holy crap, that's one of the best compliments I've ever had. So, 
Right. It wasn't just a, like, I drew your name randomly. He was like, no, your character is really cool and I really want to do it. Yeah. But, uh, so yeah, that, that's really kind of diving right into our subject, which is your Kickstarter. I'd rather be drawing's first Kickstarter. It's yours. It's your baby. It's an anthology done entirely by you. Um, I do want you to get me some um, uh, good flyer that I can hand out, put on a table, fit a couple on a sheet, whatever I need to do. But uh, I want to print those out and take them to Emerald City Comic Con next week because you're funded, but that's no reason for us to kind of stop pushing right now. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's uh, stuff we'll talk about tonight as well. So, yeah, you want to you just like get right into it? Yeah, dude, let's go for it. You, It's your first Kickstarter. Um, I don't know. What's the first thing you talked? You talked about uh, just a little bit ago that there's a lot of info out there on, okay, now your Kickstarter's going or this is how to begin it and, and all of that stuff. But you were talking about kind of the lead up to Kickstarter. It kind of felt like not that you were flying blind, but kind of had to figure out how to go because you weren't quite sure what to do. You want to start there? Yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, for anybody who ever wants to do one of these, and I, I, I hope that this falls on some ears of someone who has never done one or has done one once maybe and, and gets a little bit of information from this. But uh, so before you start a Kickstarter, you can make the like account and you can make the like campaign, like you can get on there as, any, any, as soon as you want to. And you can like, you can make the Kickstarter and start editing it all and what you're going to say and all that kind of stuff. And um, uh, Chris Rao, he told me that he's an artist friend. We had him on here a few times ago, kind of doing his Kickstarter. But um, you like, there's like this, there's a whole process. Like, and even when you're done with that process, there's like approval process, which freaked me out because each step of the approval process says it could take up to three days to do. And there's like four steps to it. And I was doing it like a week ahead of time. And I, cause I thought that was putting a time. Then I was like, oh my gosh, this would be ridiculous if I was like said I'm going to launch on Friday and I'm still going through approvals, you know? So um, I think to relieve as much stress as possible uh, a month before you even like are ready to launch your Kickstarter, you should start making what your campaign's going to look like. Because I started two weeks ahead of time and felt like I was even a little rushed on it. You've got, I mean, like if you really want that thing to look professional, you got to spend some time building some things, even if they're hand drawn or if you're just, you just type. Uh oh, are you there? Well, is it just me that lost sound? Or are you still there, David? Yeah, I, I can't hear you at all, my friend. I'm sorry, we're having a little bit of technical difficulty here. David's sound, I think, cut out. Is that what you guys are hearing out there in YouTube land as well? It was right in the middle of you talking about the good stuff. We'll try to get that back. I'm not sure what happened there. But um, the name of David's Kickstarter is um, uh, Analog Missions. His main character is Apollo. Uh, he does have the hashtag draw your own style going on right now. And some of those submissions might even make it into his book. But it's a really cool character. And if you check his Instagram account, uh, account Art of Mr. Fleming, I believe, but we'll have the link below, um, you'll see all the different drawings that he's done leading up to it. Uh, so if you want to participate in that, make sure draw in your own style and tag David uh, so he can see that. Um, I heard a little something there. Are you there? Are you back, David? Yeah, I am here. If you can hear me. Uh, I can't hear you. Any idea right. what happened? Um, I, I have a little bit of a janky setup here tonight, and I think my power cord stretching across the top of my computer bumped out the USB cord that my microphone was plugged into. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, I apologize. I, I forget right exactly where you dropped off. No, that's totally fine. I will repeat some of it and you can be like, now we heard that. Um, how much ahead of time you should start your Kickstarter? Okay, yeah. So you're recommending about a month ahead of time because there's some trial and different things going on, which just makes good sense to me anyway. That Because I think, you know, as it actually gets up to the date that it's going to happen, I imagine you if you can, you don't really want to be thinking about that stuff. You want to be thinking about the comic and the, the campaign and the actual advertisements for it. Hopefully, you know, like, which I think is what you're saying, you know, yeah. you can a month before, a couple weeks before that whole thing is in place, everything's approved and it's just kind of getting ready for the, you know, the go button. It sounded like. Yeah, basically um, you've got, 
I mean, you got a completely blank slate whenever you get started on this stuff. And I, I mean, as much as you can get on that slate before you can get things started. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm doing this thing where I'm struggling with what kind of face I want to put on this dude here. And I'm doing that thing where I'm thinking way too much about that. So I'm going to kind of work other places while I talk here. Um, yeah, I um, like luckily I, I like have a bit of an eye for the design stuff and I have worked on that kind of stuff. But I feel like if I hadn't and I like got into that like I did. I would, I would have kind of started stressing myself out a little bit, trying to decide like, ah, I gotta make this look nice and all that kind of stuff. And so I think giving yourself a month to just like play with that kind of stuff and decide what you want to look like and what to say. I mean, like, I, this is a project that I've been working on. I mean, really, if I want to quote as, exactly as long as I've been working on this thing, I've probably been working on this project for like two years in terms of like from my first got the idea and like writing out some stories and then about six months maybe of drawing so far. And like, I still sat there at some times and just kind of like type things and then erased it and type things and erased it and was just trying to figure out exactly how and what I wanted to say, you know? Absolutely. It takes a while to uh, really get that to this point. I think people take it for granted where they're like, oh, wow, it looks like he just made a comic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've been at it for a while. It's like when a band releases a CD that you like, you're like, yeah, it's this brand new band. They've been doing this for like 10 years. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I, I was just, there's a lot behind the scenes of just like, the, and then, like I said, there's that approval process, which freaked me out, but it did only take probably about 24 hours altogether. You got to like put in your bank account and put in your, uh, you have to like put in who you are as a person to make sure you're a real human and not like a robot, you know, there's like, and then they have to approve it. Like each step we have to wait and I had to wait an hour to four or five hours between some of the steps and then. I was like, okay, now click the next step, click the next step. So it was like, you, you don't just jump on the night before and hope you can click the launch button because you've, you've got stuff to, to get done. Yeah, that makes good sense. And yours, um, I think in a good way, and like Rouse kind of was too, it seemed like there wasn't a whole lot to it, meaning it was very kind of direct. It didn't use a whole lot of stuff. I don't think either one of you <clears throat> had a video with it, if I know right. Yes. Um, it's kind of a very direct, this is the product, this is what's happening, you'll get your thing by this time. Uh, I did, uh, one. I'll say some things and some people might disagree with me, but um, if I think if you don't have the editing software and the experience, I mean, we even do these videos and I feel like I didn't have the experience to make a really nice looking video, I don't think it's worth putting a video up. I have gone to some Kickstarters before that have had some videos that have just been very amateur and they've really thrown me off. Like they would made me not want to be any part of that project because that aspect of it was, was like just cheesy, I guess is a good word for it. Like that so, part was so amateur, you're worried that the product would be as well. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, I really say like, I think if, if you're not, if you're not like already awesome at that thing, just no video and just focus your efforts at other places that will look like strengths. And so you don't have like a giant weakness in the middle of a really good looking project, you know? Well, one thing, and there was somebody that when uh, they saw Rao's project, they're like, Oh wow. He doesn't have a video, huh? And I think it was a little bit like, Hmm, that's kind of oh, Rao and aces. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to exclude you, buddy. Um, but it was kind of like, wow, I can't believe those guys didn't make a video. But thinking about it, Kickstarter is not generally something, at least on our level, I think, where someone's going to just come across your item organically through Kickstarter. Like, uh, I was just searching comics, and I happened to find this guy. And so I watched the video, and, and I got to know him, and so I decided to contribute to the Kickstarter. It seems like you and Rao it's all ground game. These are people, you know, for good, even like maybe you don't know them great, but like, you know, your followers and stuff, they're people that you're telling go to this place because I have this for sale. So the idea of then to spend that much more time on a video to explain to those people who already know you and know what's going on, it maybe isn't necessary. Um, maybe if you're Nike or something and you're pitching your new product and using Kickstarter, yeah, you'd have a video with it, but I don't know. It kind of made sense to me that you guys are finding success without doing that part of it. Yeah, I, I think you put it in a pretty good like light. Um, uh, I just saw Ace asked me, uh, asked in the chat, like how much, how much, and what kind of marketing are you doing? And I think that kind of is what nails it. I mean, I I've seen some really high level Kickstarter stuff, and they don't have videos either. It's like you said, I don't. I don't think anyone's gonna look at a comic and because there's no video, 
not want to support the comic. I mean, there. I mean, it's pictures, anyways, right? Let me give you some really cool art to look at and let, let it speak for itself, and and you can read more about it in my other stuff. You know, I, I was just there's been just been too many videos I've come across because I did a lot of research. I mean, I think the best way to research for your Kickstarter is go look at people's Kickstarters, right? And and I watched some videos of people being like, "Hi, I'm David, and this is my comic. Thanks so much for." supporting it i i oh that why don't you walk with me while i talk about you know it, it was just like uh and it was like i don't want to be that and since i don't have that production value and quality behind me i just i, I jumped out of it you know yeah that makes good sense um that can be a turn off and especially with stuff like this if it is something that someone's finding organically um yeah, they're not going to spend too much time if there's one aspect of it that they're not appreciating, I suppose. Right. So anyways, um, back to, I just, I, we, I feel like we've spent enough time on that one and I'm going to go back to kind of Ace's thing. Um, in terms of marketing, you kind of said it. I mean, I, I've been doing, so I, I'm running a couple Facebook ads. Uh, right now I'm just running first couple of days. I've only ran a two people following me and friends of followers kind of ad. I'm just trying to stay in the inner circle. I'm trying to see as much as support as I can get within people who I know already kind of want to support me because I, I kind of was hoping that by the end of this weekend, I'd either be close to or where I'm at now, like a good supporting system. So that when I go to market to the outside source, it's a, hey, check out the successfully funded Kickstarter, get behind it and not just like, hey, here's this random dude who really hopes that you could give him his money kind of thing. And so um, after that, I'm going to start spending a good, another little chunk of money to do some outside source kind of um, Facebook stuff. But I really think that that passive ad stuff, unless you have a lot of money, it's probably not going to yield a lot. And I'm just, I'm just doing a minimal amount of it. I mean, I, I'm sending out emails and I'm sending out messages and I'm, and I'm contacting real people. A thing we talk about a lot on here is like in, your social media is not any different than your face to face. Like it, this is like a 30 day con just for me. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm looking at Kickstarter as being like, what would I be doing if this was convention? Well, if you walked by my table, I'd say, Hey, what's up? How's your day doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm just sending messages out to people that I know and fans and people I've seen like my stuff over the years and just saying, Hey, I know you've been supporting me. I'd love for you to check this thing out. I don't even send the Kickstarter link. Usually I'll just send the preview that I made and I'll be like, Hey, check it out. I made this preview. Uh, check it out, tell me what you think. They'll be like, this is freaking fantastic. Or they'll be like, uh, leave me alone. Or they just won't even respond. And then I'm like, well, here's the Kickstarter. I, or just share this and I really appreciate your support. And I mean, I'd say 50% of the time they, are at least, they at least share, say thanks, support it, or move on with their lives. And then I do, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like my, the worst thing they can say is no. And if they already, they already said no by me not even contacting them at all. So that's been my biggest sort of like ad or support system that I've been doing is just trying to open those relationships with fans that I know I already have. That's awesome. And I think uh, the newsletter, I see you've been uh, utilizing that because um, I'm obviously on it as well so we can see what's going on. And you had a lead up um, where for was it five days before or four days uh, before? yeah on the monday leading up into the friday yeah you, you did a daily kind of send out a daily blast just saying hey it's coming here's a different aspect of it here's what the bookmark is going to look like um i like that because it's kind of stuff that Rao talked about where it's like one in like a thousand people or more is going to be the person that gets irritated. And the reason they're irritated probably doesn't actually have that much to do with you. Most right. people, especially <laughs> the people who have signed up who are, they've signed up to follow you. They've signed up for our newsletter. Like they're on board. Um, most of those people aren't going to be like, God, stop harassing me. I'm sick of hearing about your artwork and your success. And the fact that you're a nice dude and you're making something that's important to you. <laughs> right. Actually a uh, funny thing on that. I had written this draft of this thing on the first day where it was, or actually it was on that Saturday. I sent out a blast to be like, to, like here comes a countdown kind of thing. And I'd originally been like, so I know we said we weren't going to spam you. So sorry, but here comes some spam. And my wife was like, why are you apologizing for this thing that you're stoked about? Like get rid of that apology. It, it, be stoked and and put it in front of them. And I was like, that's super real. Sometimes I think we're too quick to be like, um, I'm sorry, but uh, here's this thing I love. And it's like, no, here's this thing I love. Um, if you don't love it, then thanks a lot, man. But if you do, let's let's share that love, you know. 
Yeah, and I say it's, you know, we're sending more frequent emails because we have more news to tell you about. Right. It's not just spamming. It's not, you know, we're not faceless people who are just throwing all this crap at you. Um, you know, when that's what the whole thing kind of was is it's a way for you to kind of keep in touch with what's going on with us. So um, I, we always post it down below. We want your Kickstarter there as well as anytime you guys uh, like it, if you can sign up on the newsletter. Um, that's another bit of advice that we hear more and more these days is social medias do come and go. Algorithms change, but that newsletter, your landing page for your website, um, those are incredibly important things to have. And we're very grateful for anybody who signs on for that. And it really is just emails here and there to let you know when we have something going on. Obviously, when we have something as huge as a Kickstarter. We'll kind of keep you a bit more in the loop and everything. But Anytime you can, we sure appreciate that. But that's it. I'd rather be drawing.com or the link below. So I just I tag that there real quick. And that Pikachu is looking awesome, dude. Yeah, I um so he, uh, stress reliever for me here in the past month has been playing Smash because that is my game. And this is my main. And I've been seeing all these artists that I love doing Smash fan art things. And I was like, man, I better I gotta get in on that because Pikachu is my dude and I have never drawn him before. That's awesome. And plus it's going to, and I know you don't, you, you only do things that you're into that you enjoy and everything, but it doesn't hurt when something's popular and it's has a movie coming out. So that's pretty good too. Yeah, dude. I like, I'm super stoked. I, I, I it's like, I have like a adult full adult, like still love Pokemon crush kind of guy. Like I'm, I'm in on that one. They announced that new game here a couple weeks or I don't even think it's been a full week. Life's been crazy for me, so I have no sense of time right now. But like, and I'm like, I cannot wait to buy it. It makes sense right now for you that time might seem a little strange. <laughs> hey, by the way, do you see uh, behind me the work that I'm working on is I'm decorating my comic boxes. I don't know if you've been able to tell. You can't see anything, can you? No, I can. Do you see this guy here? This kid uh, right yeah. I've been seeing that in my stack of stickers for a while. A David Fleming original sticker right there going on here front and center so <laughs> sorry derailing just a little bit there off topic but not really no you're totally cool um ace is making good things and since this boy just involved himself in a uh, in a great kickstarter i'm gonna make some comments to him yeah ace i am um i have like a basically like a weekly plan of how much time i know i have in my life and how much i have to dedicate to the kickstarter and kind of where i want to focus my efforts and stuff and that is definitely one of them I need, I'm going to spend this next week contacting and just sending, like I said, like, I think it, a lot of times we think when we do a thing like a Kickstarter or, or a whatever, like, oh, I'm going to start selling prints. Here's my shop. And I even know this one firsthand because I don't promote that half enough. And I never tell people it just kind of exists. And I get very trickling sales in terms of that. But like, I, I'm just going to send it out to a bunch of people and say, hey, I've made this thing. If you have time, I appreciate it. If you don't have a nice day to a bunch of just online stuff right now and just and try and kind of get that thing and build up a little bit of that presence. And then, yeah, I'm going to uh, try and think of some places around town that just like nerds hang out and be like, hey, can I put this here? Can I do this there? And, and I, like that kind of stuff is very random too. And, I, and it's like you said, the chance encounter stuff of just like someone literally finding this and not doing anything at all about this project is probably pretty rare, but I, I'm hitting up every avenue I can uh, I feel like I'm in a good spot already knowing that the, the the small the inside circle has funded it. So anyone else who falls upon this is not just like crossing their fingers to fund. They're buying the book. I mean, at this point, you are literally buying the book when you find my Kickstarter. So there's like a really cool aspect to that that I'm really excited to kind of share. Well, it's cool because I know that it opened up like... So it ended one bit of stress, which was like, oh my gosh, is this going to fund? Is it something that people are interested in? Am I going to go forward with it if it doesn't fund? Like all that stuff that I'm sure everyone goes through to then in the immediate like, oh my gosh, it's funded. People are going to expect something awesome. Is this good enough? And then you quickly get over that and you're just making the thing that you know is awesome that people are into and everything. But at this point, it's cool because, yeah, it's icing on the cake. You're not going to get – you're not going to like sit back and relax and go, cool, it's funded. Awesome. That's all I need to do. You want to really kind of push this thing for as much as it's worth because – it's funded in the first 48 hours. You've done the whole thing yourself. You're, you know, it's your first time big thing. Um, 
I, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, knock on wood here, but um, let's keep it going. And you might start seeing some, some stuff that like Magnus was getting some reviews and people kind of getting some eyes on it going, well, look at this independent creator funded this much. He's, you know, 300% funded, you know? So, I mean, keeping, keep pushing it forward. Doesn't ever seem like a bad thing, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. So I'm, I'm excited to see how that goes and excited to help out as well. So um, that's why I'm like, print me some flyers, send me just a, a thing where I can go and print the flyers uh, and I'll take them to Comic-Con. I'll take them to my comic shops. I take them to my drawing things. Um, so, I mean, anywhere I can get that out, man, I want to help out as much as I can. Yeah. And, and let me tell you here too, because I mean, I, this is in my notes to talk about, but we always do this thing when we talk about good stuff and then sometimes we don't hit on the other things. Um, I, I titled the show the first 48 hours, you know, not just to talk about my success, but to kind of talk about what it looked like for me. Like, uh, it wasn't just me like sitting in front of the computer, refreshing it and like crossing my fingers that a new backer would come in. I mean, like anybody, yeah, how did you handle that stress? Um, I just like this, actually, um, I, you know, I've got a family and I got my thing to do. Um, I did this thing and I called it an hour on hour off and I went live at 11 I sent out messages, you know, I, I contacted people, I started my marketing, I hit, at 12 o'clock hit, I shut the computer. I went and hung out with my family, one o'clock hit, I said, all right, peace out guys, I'm going back to, to do my thing. And then I checked on and see where I was at. Like I, did, I just kinda, I wasn't just constantly watching the thing, I was obviously on it so I could answer questions and respond to people, but like literally I, I had like a system set up of like, okay, work it make something happen, take a break, work it, make something happen, take a break, breathe, play some smash, hang out with my family. You know what I mean? Like I, I really like, I think it helped out a lot because it was a very just fun couple of days with zero stress because it was just like, Hey, another one. Cool. Awesome. All right. And you know, Hey, blah, blah, message me back. And it was just like a really fun day of, of really no stress at all. It was just excitement. Yeah. Cause I think that's when you can turn something that's, positive into negative because right. you first put it live you're checking every hour every five minutes and it's going up a lot well then all of a sudden it doesn't go up for like 12 hours or something like that and you start being like oh my god oh my god what did i do you know so i mean that that seems pretty awesome that you were able to kind of give yourself some distance maybe even you know here and there try to actually like forget about it you know for a little bit and then be like oh yeah let me go check but i gotta say man i've been so excited since you started it I think I was actually probably checking and refreshing quite a bit more than you were, man. Um, <laughs> I, I was really excited to watch it grow. And then uh, I'm kind of late here. So, I mean, it would it would fall off or whatever. And then I'd watch and then check the morning early and then see where it went. So, I mean, I've been pretty excited for you to see where it's gone and everything. And I'm not I, – I already know – you, you know where I'm at with this sort of stuff, but I'm kind of excited because I haven't even contributed yet, which I already know I'm going to. And I feel like just waiting for like a good time, help push it over this line or something like that. But in the first 48 hours, like you were kind of passing all those lines. Like there wasn't any way to be the first one. Cause that kind of happened really quick. And I was like, well, I can't be the first one over a hundred. Cause that's already happened. And then you funded and it was like, Holy crap, this thing is going so far. So, I might have to be the person that helps push over like 300% or something if we can. Yeah, <laughs> that is funny because like there are people like you that I know have my back and I'm not even worried at all. And I know that will probably fund me who haven't also like I've got it. I've got some numbers in my head still where I'm like, this guy's probably waiting until payday. Like the, the, this family member who I know has got my like things like that, you know? And so well, plus just, I don't know if it can help any algorithms or anything like that. Like I know like there's the whole middle dip. So kind of seeing if there's a time even, if, even if you want to keep in touch with me, because I mean, we're partners um, and I'd rather be drawing. This is your Kickstarter I want to focus on, but we're partners and I'd rather be drawing. So if you're like, hey man, today would be a good day. There's been a dip or there's been a few people who have. So if we can get a few people donating today, it can help or anything like that, man. Just give me a shot because I'm already on board, but I actually thought maybe there might be a time where it could be more beneficial. I, I don't know if that's... No, yeah, that, that does make some cool sense. So, yeah, I'll keep so, yeah, that. Hollow, if, if there's anything in particular, otherwise, I'll just kind of look for an opening and be able to post it and then share it. So, oh, yeah. And let's re mention that here real quick. Even if it's something where you can't pick it up until payday or um, maybe you can't contribute right now, that's understandable. Things happen, money's tight. 
a lot of people, a lot of artists on here, friends are doing things. So even if you can't, it always helps to share, to like, to comment. Um, all of that stuff helps, but share that Kickstarter far and wide. Even if you're not contributing, it doesn't matter. Tell people about it and just tell them how cool it is because it is cool. And I know you all know that already. Oh, yeah. And I've had a lot of that, too. And that's actually been a really, it's, I don't know, it's been a really cool experience. Humbling, I don't know, is that the word for it? It's like, I just feel like I'm just amazed that so many people do have my back. And I just think that's awesome. It's just been a really exciting couple of days here and I'm, it's like I said I, and I've got not 29 more days here to just like make a cool thing out of all this and yeah I'm just like really excited I'm really pumped for you man it's an exciting time you added to your family added to your portfolio added to your legacy in many ways um, it's a big month for you man so congratulations thank you thank you hey, um, just real quick um, maybe before I don't we're getting kind of towards the end but um, an informational thing that I thought would be cool. Would you mind whether you have all the prices memorized or not, but just kind of what they are, would you mind terribly kind of going through like your tiers and what you're sort of offering people other than just the comic? Cause I do know there's some other cool stuff going on. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. So yeah. Um, uh, the comic itself is $15. It's a 50 page, not a floppy soft cover. Um, there is almost full 40 of actually I think it's more than 40 of that is story there's some like fan art stuff and some cool stuff in the back and stuff like that to account for but um you're going full like full length like full fun story here and not just like a, a quick in and out kind of thing um so on that you that's just like you get the book that's that's the basic tier I right? get that's the lowest thing you can back and get something from me kind of thing um, after that it's thirty dollars and you get your name printed in the acknowledgments which I love that it's like one of my favorite tiers to back when I back a friend or someone else's Kickstarter so I, I definitely wanted to make sure I, I had that one um, the next one up is 40 it's just an extra ten dollars I made some really cool limited edition bookmarks um, that was my idea of some kind of cool piece of art. I didn't want to make a print because I kind of already have a print that you can get in a in an upper tier, and I and I wasn't really sure what to do. Um, a lot of people do that next tier being like an original drawing and stuff like that, but I want I was being realistic with myself. Like, I don't have the time to if you know if twenty people backed that thing and I was trying to cram out twenty drawings at the last minute, I know I would just stress myself out, and that's a big thing about me. I I, don't, I do not make any decisions art wise that I know I can't handle. Set yourself up for success. That makes sense. Exactly. So I made these bookmarks, and uh, I've got some people who, who claimed the bigger tier. You get all four of the bookmarks. That tier just gets you an extra bookmark added onto it, and they're gonna be nice. I'm gonna like they're gonna be a nice cardstock, like good feeling bookmark thing. They're all the four different, like I guess you could call the main characters of that first book. The next tier is um, seventy five. And, or it might be, I think it's 70 actually. The next one is 70 and 75 with the shipping and you get an actual original page. And um, I think I had a lot of, I had a few messages about that one and then I actually had one of them claim it. Cause like, I guess there's a little bit of like, oh, what does that even mean? That is like one of my legit literal oh, 10 by 14. That's even bigger than what I'm drawing on right now. Uh, pages that I inked on and made the mess before I scanned it in and stuff. I will send you the actual page along with the book. And then there's the hundred dollar tier, which is, you get the book, you get all four bookmarks, you get a page, you get the print of the cover done like as a print. And then you also get, so there's 10 spots for that one. And this was like an idea that I had and a couple of people thought it was pretty cool. Um, whatever your spot on that one is, that's the number of the edition that I also will send you. So like the first person you claim that one gets one of the 150 that I print. The second person's gonna get the two. And I think I have two or three people who have backed at that one right now, so. That's a super cool idea, man. Appeal to that collector side of that yeah. nature of people that we know are buying. Exactly. And that's it. Yeah. And then I made a retail tier because I like that one was a Rao told me about that one. And I haven't had any bites on that one, but it's kind of like a why not, which is like for a hundred dollars, you get 20 books. So that it's almost like buying about $5 a piece. And that would be like if a comic shop wanted to like buy a supply for themselves or something like that, like that would be like the, is that now that was the price point that I was doing with his floppy with yours being a bigger, more intense book. Is that still something that is that can work out in your favor, getting that many into a shop? It does actually. Yeah. And that's awesome. it's kind of a, there's kind of a crazy um, sort of like, I don't make much profit on that at all, really almost at all. But there is like the fact that I'm getting that book out there. 
I, I, it's, oh, yeah. it's worth it. So to be able to get your book into comic shops without dealing with diamond, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Exactly. Right. <laughs> So yeah, so that's that's the basic rundown of the tiers and stuff. I I wanted to keep it simple. Um, there are a lot of people, and I've I've backed them and stuff, and I'm not saying that they're they're doing it wrong or anything. But sometimes you get into a Kickstarter and it is just it is just a mess of tiers, and it's like the bronze, the double bronze, the silver, the platinum, the no. the platinum bronze multi mer. <laughs> and, you, and you have to like you have to navigate through like a minefield of like what you don't want and what you do want and so i just wanted to make it as simple as possible and things like that i found myself being like wait did i get everything i signed up to get when initially i was like i didn't care about any of that stuff i just wanted the book and to help support it but then i'm like wait where's my edition bookmark was i supposed to get that yeah, that's why I kind of just made here like your three things you can get you can get a page a bookmark for your name and the, or you can get it all And that's rad. I love how you, I, I really do, especially on a first one. I, I know that there can be an inclination to like want to reinvent the wheel and uh, you know, just make it super special and get really creative and not that, you know, obviously it's a great creative book, but like in a cool way, you're keeping it like less is more, keep it simple. Um, all that good stuff. That I think a lot of times, especially with consumers, can actually help, you know, a lot of decisions and a lot of flair sometimes can add, I don't know, confusion, I, I suppose, yeah. or, well, I'll think about it. I'll come back later, you know, but it's, it's a really straightforward campaign, which I think people have really responded to as well. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, uh, like you said, where I, I made all those email blasts and stuff at the beginning. I, I mean, they were like a, Hey, if you never backed a Kickstarter before, um, it's actually kind of a bit of a, of a weird thing. Like, to pay me for this thing that I actually haven't made yet. So this is what a Kickstarter looks like. So like with that in mind, I, 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 do, I don't want people who have never backed a Kickstarter, but would definitely be a supporter of mine to feel like thrown off by this thing because it just didn't make sense to them or something, you know? So that's, for that's sure. a great thing. You know, I've been thinking about that because there's even like some younger folks at my work who are like, so what's Kickstarter and how does it work? You know? And, I have to put my credit card on there and stuff like that, which, uh, which I get, you know, um, people are apprehensive about putting their credit card in just another spot. Right. And it, it just got me thinking a little bit, especially because it's like girl scout season. Right. And, um, at work, there's always like a different flyer on the table saying, you know, pre-order now to be able to get whatever girl scout cookies you want later or pre-order now to get, you know, the popcorn or candy bars or any of that sort of stuff. And I thought maybe it could be an interesting thing, like if you are in a workplace or like for you at your school, um, where maybe everyone doesn't want to do that to actually put out or go up to people or whatnot and have like a list where they can sign up, like where you print it out. So it looks like, you know, a cool, this is my Kickstarter campaign. And if you donate $15, you'll get the book in this. And if you donate this much money, you'll get this. And people are like, yeah, I'm down for that. Cool. And, you know. Maybe they have like a certain, like a week before your campaign ends, they have to pay you, you know, whatever check or cash. This is if it was like a candy, you know, fundraiser or something like that. And then you can go and make that donation and then be able to give them their prizes or whatever. But I just thought maybe if that was a way for, I don't know, if you have grandparents or older aunts and uncles or people who are just not comfortable with that sort of thing, but they'd still like to support you. They'd still like to hand you 20 bucks and, and you'd still like to give them a book or whatever. I don't know if that's too silly or, or not. And uh, I, I think you're into a, a, onto a little bit of a thing for sure. Because I mean, you, you get you you do get some friends and family support, and some like I got some messages from some friends that were like, "Okay, this is a one-time payment, right? Like I'm not I'm not pledging my life away with this one. Like I'm just." And then they were like, like some people like didn't even realize until I literally saw them in real life that the next day, like, oh oh, I'm getting a book. Like they they literally thought they were just like giving to a fundraiser and stuff so yeah there's i mean i think there's something to it to just trying to get that across but i mean there there there's things too where just no matter how much effort you put into that thing sometimes you just cannot get it across it's like where you, where you uh have posted like in the body of your post like you post your cover and you're like this is my comic it's on kickstarter and then the comments where do i buy this yeah i reply. totally did that to an artist the other day um lucy bellwood posted a thing saying 
hey, I'm going to be at Emerald City Comic Con, and if you get a chance, come by this table, and then with Erica Moen, I'm going to be doing a panel at this place at this time. <laughs> and I'm just flipping through, and all I saw was at Emerald City Comic Con. So I get down there and I comment, are you doing any panels or anything? And she <laughs> goes, just the one listed above. And I'm like, dope. <laughs> <laughs> Way to so go. It happens. She was really cool. She was funny about it. I was, you know, but uh, yeah, it happens. People don't read. People don't pay attention. Yeah. So make it as easy for them as you can. In other yeah, words. Yeah. And my comment on that is just saying like, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, you can, you can fight that off and try to like do as much things as you can on that. But I think, I think you sometimes you just got to post and deal with it later. Like it's almost like you're fighting a losing battle there, you know? For sure. And you will have to educate folks. You will have to kind of teach people what it is. You want to kind of think about how you're going to phrase it beforehand. So if you want to say it's a way for you to pre-order my comic, that way they know they're spending money, but they're also getting something. I mean, if you're going to be a salesperson, you do have to think of that stuff. And if you don't like the idea of being a used car salesperson, then, you know, learn how to sell your stuff in a way that paints the reality of it, which is you're a cool person. You've worked really hard on this thing and you poured your heart and soul into it and you want to share it with everybody. For sure. I think that's a pretty good wrap up. Honestly. I mean, I, we've, we have been going at this thing, man. Well, I'm really getting a lot of good work done back here with my stickers and my comic boxes. So it was okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm, I'm pretty stoked so far at how my Pikachu is coming out here. So heck yeah, dude. So for our wrap up here, I have a feeling that I know where you're going to want to send people, but why don't you uh, let them know one more time and make sure also that you have that in, in the um, comments or in the, uh, oh, the link in bio or whatever. Right, yeah, and I, I made sure already to update that and it does have it in there, but check out link in bio and you will see that you can support me by going to my Instagram at Art of Mr. Fleming and then you can find a link in the bio or in the show notes that goes to my Kickstarter analog missions. It is a sci-fi epic sort of in, with a unique spin. I love comics, but I also love prose and I love novels and writing. So I've done kind of a really cool thing where throughout the chapters, it mixes a little bit of paragraph writing and prose novel stuff with actual comic and stuff, but it doesn't bump you out of it. At least I think so. And so it's going to be a fun thing. All three books that I have planned will be like this. Um, I think that might be a fun topic maybe for in, in a couple of weeks when it gets close to the end of sort of like what comes next now that I know that this book is going to kind of become a reality and stuff like that. So um, go check it out. Um, like I, like we were saying, share this, get it in front of people. Um, you know, if a thousand people see it and a hundred people back it, I mean, it makes the thing a reality. So. Awesome. And just so you know, in uh, the comments here, it looks like Red is working on his fan art piece uh, for you as we speak. So you're going to have even more coming. Awesome. I love it. Yeah, man, it's it's seriously a really cool dream to get so much of that stuff and just have people care enough to want to give my stuff a shot. So I have some I have a couple of cool ones I actually haven't shared yet that I'm going to share this next week. Well, it's a thrill for me even getting to see all those as they come in. So I'm excited to see more of them and excited to uh, be able to do my spin on it. So awesome. and, uh, if you want to kind of keep an eye out, segue on uh, my drawing for David that I'll be doing, my draw in his style. Um, my Instagram handle is Mr. Green Draws. That's mr.greendraws. That's where you'll find me most of the time, but I'm very active on our Facebook page for I'd Rather Be Drawing. There's always I'd rather be drawing.com as well. In my bio on Instagram, it's also kind of the link to my Etsy shop where I have comic books for sale, prints for sale, um, where you can support me. And then also just want to say with the uh, anthology that I'm a part of, um, follow the hashtag the 100s. There's more, but I'll just stick with that one for now. Hashtag T H E E 100S. The 100s. Because you will not only follow my progress on this new anthology, um, but you also get to see 30 other artists and their progress as well. So please stay tuned for that. And thank you guys uh, for being in the chat, for sharing it everywhere. Please tell people about Analog Missions as much as you can. Um, we've got under 30 days to go. How many days exactly, David? Uh, let's just let's do this thing. Um, we are at 29, 29 days to go. Uh, 29 uh, days to go. Let's see if April we can. Uh, oh, what? Sorry. 
April 9th is the close date. April 9th is the close date. So let's see if we can't help shine a spotlight on the indie creators, the little guy, and see how far we can get this book out into the world. So thanks very much for your help, everybody. Anything else from you, Mr. Fleming? That's it, man. Let's close it out. All right. Have a wonderful night. Analog Missions, find it. Peace.